All right, welcome back. You're still listening to Breakfast Connect here on Africa Business Radio. I am still Labin Bola here in the studio, and uh, we have uh, an interesting guest in the studio. Well, with us, so with a huge round of applause, welcome Tracy Enauba, uh, CEO of the Online Lady Limited. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Now you sound like my best friend who, who saw my CV and she said, Trace, is this you? I don't recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's start with uh, a little background. Uh, you had your first job at 16 and then became an editor at 18. Youngest in Nigerian history. Um, the only Nigerian writer uh, hosted at the London Olympics at uh, at 26. Uh, How have you managed to maintain your drive for excellence uh, from a young age? Hmm. Hmm. Ah, When somebody wants to start (laughs) answering a question by hmm, it means you need to find a cup of coffee or some water. Oh dear Lord, I will make it brief. I'd say that... um, it wasn't the absence of fear. It was the fact that I believed that everything was possible. Hmm. I think that's one of the greatest gifts of being a child or being a young person. Hmm. The older you get, you have more experiences. They tell you, oh, you might fail here, you might not fail there. But being young and coming up so quickly, it really, really, really was the fact that I was fearless. I thought I could do anything. Like, if you told me I could go to the moon and back on my own as a 16-year-old, I wouldn't hmm. believe you. You know that feeling. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, life just hits you, you know, and then you're like, ah, who, who hit me from behind? And yeah. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So being meticulous helped me a lot as well. My mantra for a long time was whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. Better not to do it at all than to make a mess of it. Yeah. And then as I graduated into my 20s and out of it and into my 30s, I started to recognize that failing and making mistakes was also a very serious part about being a human being. Mm. But the trick was, and this I'm grateful for my professor at Lagos Business School, Mm. said, fail fast, fail very quickly. Please, by all means, fail. But pick it up quickly, pivot quickly, because you want to pick up those lessons and you want to keep going, 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 going. So I took that along and these things I would say, the fact that I believe everything was possible and the fact that now I recognize that you should fail too because you want to combine both of them, the fearlessness and then the ability to learn from your mistakes and then keep going really quickly. So this helped me. <laughs> wow. Feel fast. Um, you know, I was in the company of someone who said something similar to me hmm. um, almost about well to us you know but it was like it was speaking directly to me this was almost about 20 years ago okay that even if you've not had your wilderness experience yeah. you know at a young age mm-hmm. please ask for it now because when you get <laughs> and it's true so ask, ask for it now because yeah. when you get older you may not have the physical strength Mm-hmm. And then the mental ability to yeah, deal with it. Yeah, the tenacity to just drive along. Yeah. And I noticed that that happens to a lot of, you know, um, child prodigies. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people who find success at a very young age. Yeah. Um, because, you know, everything just goes smoothly. And then at mm-hmm. a point, um, when the... Yeah, uh, when they start, to, you know, the valleys start to come mm-hmm, at a, because they will, yeah, they are you know, it, it now becomes uh, finding a way to navigate it. You know, becomes m- much of a challenge. Yeah, uh, I'd say that, that that never happened to you. Or, oh, or, it did. <laughs> That's what I was going to come in to say. My social cultural environment, using my parents as a key point of reference, was key. So surrounding yourself by, um, you know, children learn not what you say but what you do. So I saw, I saw them be entrepreneurs, I saw them grow, I saw them fail, struggle, all mm. of that. So that way it was easy for me to just pick along those mm. lines because to me it felt normal, mm. which was why I didn't quite feel out of place if I had to be somewhere doing something. I mean, I, I went alone to the Olympics by myself, warehouse at the South Bank Center. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, they were giving us free pounds. Mastercard was giving us money every week. <laughs> 
and telling us just sit down and have fun and write document your experiences and my parents encouraged me to go ahead and you know study English that I loved mm-hmm. instead of going for something professional at yeah. the time so my first degree English second degree is English now my PhD I'm going to the same level so you know they just encouraged me to keep going I didn't feel any pressure to any pressure to conform in any way I only felt the, the drive to just flow in wherever your spirit leads uh, hmm. for them I'm honestly like mommy daddy if you're listening thank you <laughs> well there's nothing you know like having a good uh, support system yeah um you know people who will you know let you do what you want to do yes. a lot of uh, young people growing up i mean if you've not filled in uh, doctor or, or engineer hmm. or pharmacist you in imagine. your jam form you're on your own it, it's like better go and look for someone who will pay for that jam form exactly I mean, is this what you want to do but the world is changing now look at all the conversations around the world so this is actually helping people in creatives also make uh, make a difference as well helping people who fancy uh, degrees that are not science based or tech based to also make it and it was from here that I you know, joined all of my experiences together and I said, okay, I may have started out as a writer, but then I have grafted into um into a career that has now helped me merge my creative talents and then my work experience. So a lot of the roles that I've acquired since my first managerial role at 24 was in management consulting or business management. So it's good that I know how um, systems work, how making money works, and it's good that I have my creative and communicative abilities there because that's what a writer makes you. You read a lot, so because you read a lot, then you're in a better position to express yourself Add that with business numbers and knowing how things work in, you know, closed spaces. Boom! You have the digital <laughs> the digital communications consultant, which is what I am now with the online lady. And I couldn't have come here if I didn't have all of that leading up to this moment. Fantastic. We're going to go into the online lady. Uh, get, I mean, because that's huge conversations, you know, to be, have, to be had there, especially when it comes to the digital space and uh, all the opportunities, yeah. you know, in there. Uh, the misconceptions, the um, uh, miscommunications, you know, ha- happening uh, in that space. But mm-hmm. in your professional experience, how has the new normal of the uh, coronavirus um, and, you know, everything surrounded, uh, surrounding it, how uh, has it, you know, affected you or, you know, how... We- how are you coping with it? Or, you know, hmm. what has it felt to you? <sighs> I have grown the most since the lockdown in Nigeria. I was locked down in March. Yeah. Yeah. So I have grown the most because I, for the first time, had to spend a lot of time by myself. Most people did anyway because we're all in isolation. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this time, I read more than ever. Mm. I think throughout the lockdown, I read some almost 400 books. God help me. I'm just a voracious reader. It's my thing. It's my happy place. Um, This is why I do book reviews online sometimes. So I read the most. Aside from reading the most, I started to spend a lot of time by myself. And I started to internalize, ask myself what it is that I wanted, what it is that I wanted to go, and all of that. So this helped me to come up with, uh, you know, like conversations in my head about where I wanted to go. And I like to think that the rest of the world was like this too. People spent a lot of time by themselves and I started to reflect all of the things that I thought we are normal, we are no longer normal. I don't even know how parents were able to make it through this period at home with their kids, working at the same time and trying to make money. Like, it's just pure genius. This, these are just one of the things that have changed. So now we are all almost working from home or at least remotely. Zoom meetings have come to stay. Virtual spaces have become normal. Who would have thought? And you know the one that just blew my mind? Everybody thought that having a physical structure for a business was okay. It was good enough. Now, it was the, It was the starting point. It was the starting point. But now, if you do not have online space, forget it. You're going to be out <laughs> and dead in less than five years. It's that bad. But it, well, it is the future, isn't it? Mm-hmm. How much you know of the future do you think it is? Because... It's it's almost like it's there. There is some pushback mm-hmm. to um, making this new normal the 
the the normal uh, as it were it, it's almost <laughs> like it's getting some pushback because mm-hmm. there has been i feel there has been a lot of growth mm-hmm. uh, there has been a lot of um, rediscovery you know like you said mm-hmm. and people have come to do things that they've never they, they never thought that they could do we see older people now yeah. even you know learning um uh, more about um you downloading know, apps yeah downloading apps you know b- being on whatsapp um uh, attending services uh mm-hmm. online now exactly. and not feeling that they have to be there physically mm. you know but there is still some resistance to it even yeah. though it's even though it's more convenient, which is the part that really blows my mind. I don't know why. Because change is not an easy t- thing to navigate. It is not. <laughs> You're used to doing things in a certain way. You have conditioned your brain to function in this certain way. Then all of a sudden, you have to get your brain to do it in a different way. Of course, there's the balancing in period. This is exactly what is happening to us right now. We're trying to balance into the new normal and it will be tough it will be difficult people will still break down people will still cry people will still struggle people will ask themselves if they are sane if they are not but at the end of the day it is what it is my so uh, two days ago my mom said oh someone invited her to a 50th birthday and i'm like oh but what are you doing on your phone and there's the woman sitting there with the cake and they're all singing and everybody's logged into the zoom and i'm like really a lagos or one has gone this way can you believe it <laughs> so at that point i said this thing is real. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. But, um, you know, my experience was my in-laws. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they sent me a picture. My brother-in-law was at their place. Mm-hmm. And then he sent me a picture. And it was like, guess what's happening here? Mm-hmm. Someone was having a 70th birthday. And you could see both of them mm-hmm. in front of the... Um, laptop okay you know being part of the 70th birthday uh-huh. and they were dressed as if they were you know attending the and yeah. i was wondering uh, did they have to put on gilly and do makeup you know huh. <laughs> okay so <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> what this what this makes me um think of is um was it keanu reese's the matrix or so you know mm-hmm. like one of all them futuristic yeah. movies anyways so one day we're going to have holo- holographic phones yes People will appear live in front of us. We'll no longer need screens. Mm-hmm. We'll press something on our thumbs or whatever, and they'll just come and we'll have conversations. We'll go to parties virtually in that same holographic yeah. manner. It's coming, whether we like it or not. I, I, I feel this is nature or, you know, whatever um, uh, supreme deity you want to refer <laughs> to it, the way of telling, you know, preparing us for what is coming. Yeah. I mean, it is no longer science fiction. Mm-mm. This is, you know, people need to start thinking out of the box. Yes. Um, it, it's what is going to happen, whether you like it or not. Whether they like That's it or not. That's just, I mean, look at the number of people who have died from this mm. coronavirus now without firing a single shot. Yeah. A bullet, not one bullet was fired, not one bomb was dropped, and people have died if only everybody had stayed in their homes for 30 days. Yes. This is something that had a gestation, you know, a, 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 a revolving of two weeks. About two weeks. Okay. And all everybody had to do was stay in their homes for, um, let's say, 28 days. Yeah. And it, this thing will have fizzled out. But we refuse to. Yeah, because you know we how we are to... now. <laughs> we are like, <laughs> don't worry. It's just one of those things. Are you really sure? Everybody, even till today, some people still do not believe, you know, that, that, there, is yeah, that there, there is coronavirus. Personally, I've lost, you know, quite a number of people in this period, more than I have ever done in a calendar year. And the year is not oh. over yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, just last week, uh, someone, um, she drove herself mm-hmm. to the isolation center. Her husband mm-hmm. is a doctor. Mm-hmm. And she died the night overnight on the day that she went there oh, wow. you know so uh, it, that's why it really gets to me when people say uh, I, I don't believe it three cases that I know personally who were diagnosed to have it and then they died then quite a number of people who have died mysteriously and these, and unquote. yeah and these are people that you know uh, I grew up with and we are friends with and why didn't they die last year yeah you know so and uh, um, people are still wondering you know but 
you know, I, I, let's let's go back to <laughs> let's go back to where we're coming from, <laughs> and uh, you know the um, how our world is changing. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I'd completely agree by saying that the change will not be comfortable. It is not comfortable. But I've watched one thing. It seems that the children are better adjusted to this change than we who are adults or those who are elderly. The kids are beginning to say it's as normal to have the Zoom things, Mm -hmm. have devices now. Anybody who hasn't bought devices for their kids, you know... You're like, okay, is that even normal? Mm-hmm. So they are more they are more open to change. They don't have as many walls as we do. Their minds are fluid. But we adults are struggling with the change mm-hmm. much more than they are because our minds aren't so fluid. You know, all the biases, the experiences, all the things we've been through. We're like, what if it doesn't work out? The child is more like, oh, new stuff. New what stuff, if it's yeah. really cool? Yeah. So I think this is the this is the um, this is the entree we should have for this coronavirus conversation. Yes, there's a lot of oh, I've done it in this way and I'm not so sure. But what if it works? The truth is that this change has been coming mm-hmm. for years, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of people have been pushing it aside and you know uh, not wanting to embrace mm-hmm. it. But then this virus came to let us know that look. This change is going to happen whether you like it or not. Exactly. It, you know, that's just the, the way I see it because it, it's been coming. Yesterday, I was having a conversation, you know, uh, with someone and we were just talking music. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, I was talking about when I had my first, uh, when my dad bought me my um, a mixtape for my 10th birthday. Mm. And then we were like, tips. And then we went on about tips <laughs> that, oh my word, the days of Walkman and Discman. <laughs> uh, but... All of that is, you know, it's all stories now. Yeah. It, um, there was this um, image that went around at some point okay. and was asking people if they know the relationship between um, a tape and a pencil. <laughs> and that, that okay. you know, the, the kids... Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, uh, rewind the, to rewind yeah. and oh fast forward, God. you know, so I that you don't, ru- that so that you don't uh, <laughs> run down your battery for your disc man, and then uh, oh for your walkman. And then when disc man came, it was like, oh, I don't have to fast forward. I could yeah. just skip exactly, you know, to the exact song I want. Mm-hmm. So it had been coming. It had been coming. Mm. It had been coming. You know, and gradually, then, like yeah, a snail. Uh, but. You know, it, it's here now whether we want to accept it or not, you mm-hmm. know. And we don't know what is coming next after this. Mm-mm. We don't know what is coming then. And we don't, I don't think we need another pandemic to let no. us, uh, we, it, it shouldn't have to come it to that. It shouldn't have to come it to that. It shouldn't have to come to that. So, so the digital world right now is becoming almost like what shops used to be for you to start your business. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and yes, you know, yes, and yes. that's where people like you are operating right now, and um, you know, uh, trying to lead, uh, try to quickly, you know, Ooh, enter that quickly space and enter the space quickly. Help people come into the yeah. space, you know, because um, and I'll make reference to this for eight years, from 2011 to 2019, I spent time at a bakery here in Lagos where I work. And when I joined the bakery, it was very offline. Like, everybody came to knock on the gate to buy pastries. And I said, it's going to cost so much manpower having people just coming in. Why not we find a way that they don't come, they just stay where they are, and we move the stuff to them. Mm -hmm. So it was a constant practice of getting them to trust us without seeing us hmm. and I had no idea I was building a company of the future hmm. so I'm still in touch with the bakery and I have heard that when the pandemic happened they were almost not affected because their customers were already used to hmm. dealing with them virtually so they just picked up from there and I was like oh god I was building a company of the future and I had no, no idea. idea yeah so those practices are what you know, sung in my head during the pandemic and like during the lockdown. And I said, there must be so many other people out there who are struggling with just communicating online. Yeah, this thing has come back to teach us trust. Mm -hmm. Because, um, well, they used to tell us stories back in the day how 
our um, forefathers, our grandparents and great grandparents used to make yeah. sales by just putting their wares on the road, mm-hmm. and anybody passing by who is interested mm-hmm. will pay and pick up, you know, the and items go. and go. And then, you know, whenever you're coming, you just pick up, Your you money, know, yeah. the money, and then yeah. you. So there used to be trust, and then somehow it was lost the, in the middle. And now we are picking, you know, picking up on it now with the logistics business and online where you can pay on Amazon or eBay or Mm -hmm. Alibaba, you know, and you have no fears about your goods, you know, coming in. Yes. And you're not scared because they took time to build your trust. Yeah. You know, so uh, we, I mean, we are going back to that time and you know these are some of the positives you know to take away from this time from this period i agree with you yes completely it's some of the positives to take away so a lot of people now are more focused on oh just have your social media manager post something okay (laughs) shouldn't you be thinking about a goal first what do you want to get out of this and then work your way back start from the goal and then go back because that way you'll channel all your structures online all your communication online, everything will tie in with that goal because that would be a call to action, what to want people to do or say. So if they don't believe in you first, then there's no way they're going to come to you. And people like Amazon and Co, they took time to build all yeah. of this. So building trust online is you putting virtual structures in place that are consistent over time. <laughs> Consistency is key. Yes. Um, I had, um, I got a call yesterday from someone okay. who was telling me um, that um, someone just, you know, told me that they had some tubers of yam, uh, mm-hmm. about 200 of them that mm-hmm. am I interested in buying? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden they were like, let me try and see if I can sell these 200 tubers of yam. Okay. I got that call around 7 p.m. yesterday. Mm-hmm. By 10 p.m., from the comfort of their home, mm-hmm. they had sold 165 tubers of yam. And I'm sure you use something that looks yes. like a device to just do it. <laughs> by posting online and you know communicating. With you are you interested in buying mm-hmm. sold 165 two bars of yam exactly and without the shop, without, without the shop? you know without and just like that yeah. And we that's the shop. future. That is the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> instead of, it, like then you said, when we want to start a business, would, you know, go out, register it at CAC, whatever, and then you go find somewhere to rent, buy or build, you know, like a place so that people can come to you. So now it's a little bit different with the online space. Instead of, after you're doing your registration, of course, then you go online and then you pick a, an office and an office is a website. Mm-hmm. And this is your face first, first go to place. But all of your noise online has to be able to tie into your shop because when you put out a billboard advertisement, when mm. you put something in a magazine that people read on a plane, it still takes people to the address of your of your shop, your office, which is a physical place. They go there. So it's the same thing. When you make all your noise online, it has to tie in. It has to narrow down to your office, to your shop. So how are you getting people to come there? How are you engaging your traffic? Have you even decided who your clients are? Mm. Have you tried to do your metrics, your figures, know where they are, what they do, what they're looking for, how to communicate with them, even based on the age ranges, the way you talk to teenagers, not the same way that you talk to, you know, like as elderly citizens. So all of these things are some of the things that strategists will think about before they help you create and factor in your online space, your online office. Hmm. All right. So you've, um, um, you've been around uh, b- domestically, internationally, um, the online business, the online space mm-hmm. here in Nigeria, in Africa, and you know the online space outside of the continent, continent of Africa, outside of Nigeria. Mm-hmm. There, you know, well, you are the the expert in, in that field. There is a gap, isn't there? And how do we? How much um, work do we need to bridge that gap? Okay, so there is a gap, yes, but I'd say that we are blessed because we are largely untapped. So it's like how you men go looking for virgin wives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not bring in the feminism conversation or let's leave that one in one side, but I just use that as a metaphorical let's, let's reference. Leave, let's leave that for our Friday discussions. Okay. 
<laughs> so how 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 you going? Say, oh, in this village there are virgins. Oh my God, let's flock there. It's the same thing with Africa. So everybody in the rest of the world has caught up and has caught up pretty fast. But here we haven't. So we are fresh. We are largely untapped, and because of this, it's an exciting place to invest in. Um, the online lady, I have only started running this as a registered consultancy this year, but I've already gotten my first grant. Hmm. For instance, because black women in technology, that's hard when you're coming from Africa because black lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point I'm making is because we are untapped, it means that we need a lot of help getting into the online space, catching up with the rest of the world. And this is why consultancies like mine are there. I'm not just the only one. There are so many other people, but there are so many millions of Africans. In Nigeria alone, we're like 200 million people. Mm -hmm. If half of us are entrepreneurs, what does that mean? You need to get over 100 million businesses online. That's a lot. I'm just it's speculating, but that's what it is. So because of this, um, you rec recognize that people need to catch up with what is going on in the rest of the world. We are now living in a borderless world where time and space doesn't seem to matter. Hmm. I'm currently getting my PhD from a Canadian university. And when I'm in class, uh, my classmates in Korea are already in the next day. Mm -hmm. My classmates who are in British Columbia are in, <laughs> in the, the, the daytime. Day. And I am in the night. For instance, if we are all, you know, like uh, learning um, synchronously at the same mm -hmm. time. So when you think about all of this, it also affects business as well. You then have all of these walls that are breaking down. And now Africans, we are trying to slide in there. But we should slide in there in a way that makes sense. We should slide in there with, um, with the basic etiquettes of online communication, which the rest of the world is used to. So that when we are encountered with the rest of our counterparts out there, we are respected because we are doing things in the right way. So there's a gap, but we are blessed because now everybody's looking at us to tap, 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 tap. <laughs> well, using uh, an agricultural reference, okay. um, to what degree would you say we are in right now? Uh, are we in the tilling phase or the planting phase, uh, in, or the harvesting phase? And you know, when we get uh, talking about the harvest, harvesting phase, okay. Um, are we using hoes and cutlasses to harvest when we should be using combined harvesters? <sighs> you just ah, took there me you back to again. my agriculture um, science class in secondary we are, school. We are going back to the beginning <laughs> when you wanted when you started by you know breathing deep. So mm. um, where's that coffee again? Okay, uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 keep your bottle down. Okay, so I will. We are definitely not near harvesting. Um, we are. We are now planting. Hmm. We are planting. Some people have tilled manually with a hoe. And they've run out of steam. Hmm. Um, what I mean, this, they've tilled manually with a hoe and they've run out of steam. A lot of people, because they are now forced to go online very quickly because of the whole new hmm. world normal thing, they have spent all their energy trying to do something that they are not skilled at. And it takes time to learn. So how about if you say, I will do it myself, I will not get a consultant involved. By the time you have actually done all the learning, you've, you've lost so much time and that is not your core. That was another thing that I learned while, while I was at LBS. You need to know when to just outsource. Save yourself the, you know, the energy and then focus on your core. So a lot, of, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of African business people, we are very, very used to doing things by ourselves. You do everything you don't. <laughs> Micromanaging. Micromanaging for crying out loud. You see, the investment towards the future will be better if you recognize that my core is this. This is what I love to do. I am a designer. I love to design clothes. Why do I have to learn how to build a website? For crying out loud. The time I'll spend learning how to build a website, I would have done my real design. Yeah. And you know. So this is how I mean that we are in the in the stage where we are currently um planting so we have we've done the tilling but how you've done the tilling is some people that's have another seminar discussion another yeah. seminar discussion because groundbreaking you know is breaking the ground you know for the planting mm. that's another if it's not done well you will have too many weeds growing up with the plant so yes. it's you know so 
I'm just throwing in another agricultural could mechanize, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish we I wish we could all mechanize it, but yes, not everybody can afford to mm-hmm. to get a, a third party involved in, in starting up their online business. So there's mm-hmm. that. But this is your agricultural reference. Can I ask <laughs> if you're a farmer? Uh, well, I did. I, I studied my agricultural engineering as my first degree. Mado. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, it, it goes back to where, 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 like, where we started the conversation from. Mm-hmm. Because I had... Um, my, my parents were very um, artistically inclined. Indeed. Yeah. My dad was a lawyer. My mom was an English literature major. Aww. So we were all artistically inclined, but the, we all studied sciences. Hmm. Strangely, you know, we just wanted to do something different, but we've all come back now to the creative art. So it's almost yeah. like, you know, but, you know, no knowledge is lost. Yeah, no, yeah. no so, knowledge is lost. Yeah. You build on it totally. Mm-hmm. And who knows, you might have just activated some recessive genes <laughs> that we are there, but became dominant with your parents. And here you are. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Your mom was just like me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, the books... Um, you know, she would have the literature books by C. Prene Quincy, mm. Gugi ah. and um, you know, um, Chino Achebe, Chino Achebe yes. Wale Shoenka. Wale Shoenka. She had, you know, she would have the po- um, the the collection of poems. Mm-hmm. She would have the notes on the collection of poems, yes. in, and then you know, I, you know, so I'll be like, so which one should I read first? Uh, which one should I read after? You know, my mom taught me to read. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a teacher. I was. I didn't learn to read in school. Mm-hmm. I was homeschooled reading. I can remember vividly the first the day I read an entire passage of a book. And if my if cell phones were available then, she would have called her friend <laughs> and be like, "My son is reading," because yeah. I could re- I could literally see her face light up. And I could see the excitement. And she was, her closest friend lived, you know, almost like two streets away. Yeah. And she, she she could almost want to run to her place. I'd be like, <laughs> Look at what I've you done did. it. I did this. <laughs> I did. Yeah, and readers are thinkers. So I am not, I am not surprised that you, you know, that you flow in the way that you do. I can tell that even if you're not a cerebral person, you have an intellectually sound mind. Oh, thank you. And it only comes from a place of opening it up, breaking down walls. And this is what books do. Because reading is such a personalized event with your brain. And for each book that you read, your brain is opening up a file, is connecting with the previous one and all of that. And this is how you build your own knowledge and connect meaning. Hmm. And I can hear see and feel that just sitting across the table from you right now <laughs> I, I know uh, creative people uh, when you ask of them this question it's um, the usual response is like I can't choose between my children but of all mm-hmm. your liter- literary works you know which ones or which one or which ones you know were uh, most dear to you hmm. I'd say when I was an undergrad I loved Dostoevsky a lot <clears throat> Dostoevsky um Ah, there was this one, Tolstoy. I fell in love mm. with Tolstoy when I was school. Anna, Kar- Anna Karenina. Oh. That was my first. Um, that was my first read about how a woman in you know in b- back in those days mm-hmm. was coming out to define her happiness. And there was something about the way he told the story. It was like taboo in that time. But now it, there are so many conversations across the world about women defining their own happiness. So that book worked for me. Um, Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter was another one. I love the way she was oppressed and then she took that into a beautiful thing. So even though the A on her chest was supposed mm-hmm. to symbolize adultery, mm-hmm. in the end people started calling her angel mm-hmm. because of the way she gracefully carried her cross. Mm-hmm. That's for the books that I started to fall in love with as a young girl, a teenager. Now, now... Ha. Can anybody not love Chimamanda's writing a mm. big? <laughs> so I love um, this one that I read very recently. If I could be any literary character, it would be Ife Melu. Mm. Um, Americana. Americana. Yes. Ah, no, Ife Melu is my babe through <laughs> and through. <laughs> 
so that um, I've also read a lot. My research was, well, I think my undergraduate or my master's research was actually on Ngugi Wathiongo. So I loved his book, Wizard of the Crow. I also reviewed his son's book very recently, the one at Cornell, um, Mukoma Wangugi, um, We Discard. Ha! Huh. The way the way that book got me was the way he talked about relationships. So it wasn't done from an I love you, boy meets girl, we follow the line, where are we going, we wind up. Mm-mm. It was more like two of us, we saw each other, okay, we are liking each other. Eh, okay, mm. we've been doing this for one year. Mad, okay, where do we go from here? <laughs> so I like the way the seriousness was taken out of the picture and then it was just allowed mm-hmm. to flow, you know. And I mean, now, now, I'm, now I'm writing a second book. Um, my first book was was like a post-colonial one because Anglophone literature kind of like deals with that, all that um, existential existentialism problems with exile and finding yourself being a subset of someone. This concept of the abroadian, mm-hmm. you know, who are you in terms of reference to the world? How African or un-African are you? There is that. I mean, I experienced racism for the first time in my life when I was nineteen. I traveled alone without my parents, and it was a very big deal for me. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, so there's that. But all of this is just to give you a, a, a wide idea on some of the books that I've loved, some of the books that most influenced me. And if I could name one book that inf- influenced my business career, like my life as a manager from my first managerial role at 24, is this book written by Muriel Guglielmo, Women, Work, and the Art of Savoir Faire. Hmm. No, 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 no. I love that one. <laughs> Savoir Faire, that's the word I first heard listening to um, Queen Latifah's Fly Girl. Mm, okay. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what the word meant. And then uh, later, oh, Savoir Faire, yeah. Mm. One with class on Savoir Faire. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's a French word, <laughs> yeah. but it says that, you know. Mm-hmm. As a woman, you, you have to just have that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, the online lady. Um, what is it that you would want people to n- know the business as? Um, it's one thing to say, ah, this is my mission statement. Like one of my uh, former bosses will say, um, you are not what you say you are. You are really what people say you are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so... Besides what you have written in the memorandum of articles, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> what would what is it that you want people to say? Ah, this is who online lady is. If someone was going to you know refer or you know write a reference about the online lady. Okay, so using digital strategy uh, consulting as the word it seems too big. Let me break it down and personify it. Please do. It. <laughs> Basically, what the online lady does is she takes your business online, helps it succeed there, and she keeps it that way. Hmm. Yes. So initially, when I wanted to start, I recognized that all the consulting that had to do with digital strategy was mainly championed by men, um, or mainly championed in a very serious way, you know. <laughs> and I recognized, having um, led many teams, that... Men are great because you guys have an analytical mind and that's priceless. But I recognize that while men have an, 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 an analytical mind, women are more um, emotional. And emotional intelligence is trending right now. Like it's trending. It's hard currency. It's hard currency because your ability to process and then after processing to feel... And when you merge it, it means that you will come into conversations with more success than other people. So I said, why make it the online company like my counterparts in the Netherlands who own the online company? Why not just make it the online lady? What's so bad in saying that a woman is doing it? So luckily for me, I have the analytical skills because I have already worked as assistant general manager, companies manager, a marketing and brand manager. All of that, I've handled those roles in the various places I've worked since I was 24. So why not come and take that experience and use it? But then I have such a strong creative background because I started off as a writer. So if I merge my communication skills with my business management skills and I'm training. So what the online lady will do for you is she will help you to come online in the way that you want and get your goals out of it and then keep it that way. Because it's one thing to go there and then how about maintaining it? Hmm. There's that. 
Yeah. Um, rising is one thing. Um, staying in the air is another. Um, <laughs> keeping it up there, you know, is a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy, you know, to climb. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lift up, um, I can't remember, you know, in terms of uh, actual power. I used to know that figure, uh, but uh, mm. life has happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> that was but, cute. <laughs> you know, but, you know, getting in the air and coasting. Uh, but yeah. some, sometimes, uh, at, at some point, you have to, you know, just come down and feel what is happening. All right, uh, you people, what's happening down there? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you go back up again. And in Nigeria, we're very good at starting things. You'd agree with me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, we are yeah. good at starting things, breaking ground, mm-hmm. but whether we're good at keeping it, keeping that way, it is another that's thing. The problem. That's that's the, that's one of the biggest problems we mm-hmm. have, you know, in this part of the world. The discipline to continue. You, you can actually have that argument about every you know problem that we have right now. Yes. From politics to um, everything, you know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. the political system we started with is not the one that we have now. Mm-hmm. The um, kind of utility systems we have is not, not the one we, we have, have now. now. Banking structure, financial, economic Same structure thing. is not. I mean, so but everything you know, we we just keep, you know, changing and reinventing for the sake of it, mm-hmm. not because it was needed. Yes, and I think that's another problem. So the, because we are such an ostentatious type, like we Nigerians, we are very showy. So we're more interested in, oh, what does this person think about what I have to do or what I have to say? Because of that, a lot of our actions are glued in that area. So you start something, it's flashy, it's all of that. But the tenacity to maintain it comes from an inner passion, an inner drive. It's not coming from outside. It's not about how many likes you get for that product on Instagram. It's about how you're able to sustain it from what's coming at you from inside. And this is the inner drive that I have that has kept me like thriving this far because uh, my mom refers to me as a self-starter and another thing okay yeah this is my flaw now (laughs) i hardly 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 forgive myself for not getting something right they say they say that when i was um when i got the um the position um as a business analyst in mckinsey's next women's Generations Award. I was a finalist in 2017. So they had said to me that management consultants are people who are able to think critically, strategically, and very clearly about problems and then to go about fixing them without being apologetic for the solutions that they get. Mm. Now, they said people who... Uh, very you know meticulous have a small eye for detail and all of that because they don't forgive themselves for getting things wrong they make sure that they kill themselves to get it right in the hmm. first place <laughs> i think i think that that is that is one of my things so i'm so hell-bent on performing so well that i'm like girl you cannot not fail <laughs> <laughs> you cannot not yes, fail yes yes no it's not allowed it's not acceptable <laughs> so there's that and and i think that this has helped in the conversations that I have with myself about the projects that I get myself involved in. Um, I mean, I am a boutique consulting firm, so it means that I will not take more than three clients in a quarter Hmm. because I want to be able to focus on what I'm doing. I want to make sure that your story tells the story to the rest of my clients. It's not about making the money. No, in Nigeria, just right now, oh, you want it? Oh, yeah, quick, quick, quick. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Whatever is worth doing is worth doing doing well. (laughs) Oh, Oh my word! Um, uh, you know, I wish you know we could keep on having this conversation, uh, but you know the, the conversation will continue. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, it will continue online. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure after we post this conversation, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on our post- podcast page, yeah. it's going to get a lot of uh, <laughs> a, a lot of comments, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm really you know looking forward to that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, mm. uh, especially for being here physically uh, in pleasure. the studio. Because, you know, part of what has happened, you know, to us as well is that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of our conversations in recent times have been virtual. Yes. You know, but there's nothing, you know, sometimes, you know, like having that face-to-face conversation. I'm glad I came in. <laughs> I mean, I- I'm tempted to have gone online and just done what I needed to do from the onlinelady.com, but I'm here. Yeah. 
And uh, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are super happy here. Yay. All right. Um, it's still Breakfast Connect on Africa Business Radio. And uh, we've been talking to the online lady, uh, Tracy. I had to consult my friend uh, for the um, correct pronunciation of your name. Hmm. Nauba. Nauba. With the R. So that yes. you tilt a little to the yes. R. <laughs> and I was asking her. And, you know, you know all these um, people that they don't even... They, and I was angry because she said, well, I know the meaning of my own name. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is that all you know? <laughs> and you're proud? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, you know, after she gave me the pronunciation, she was like, I think I said, you think? Oh, oh don't be too hard on the girl. Take it easy. <laughs> Oh my word. Yeah, it's a Naoba. Yeah. In the funky way, but the ebotic way. Hmm. Naoba. It just means my father has wealth. That's a name I would like to have. <laughs> my <daughter. laughs> All right. Thank you so much once again. Yeah. And uh, we have to do this in some other way or form uh, yes. at a future date. I agree. We'll take you up on that. Thank you. All right. Well, the show continues uh, in a bit. Stay with us.